Hello people, it's Elston Nation here. Today I'm going to run you through how I painted the Night Haunter Primark by Forgeworld. Now anyone who watches my channel knows I'm a big Night Lords fan, so this was a uh, real excitement for me to be able to paint this. Um, and I thought I'd do a tutorial on it. Now what you will see is a lot of mistakes, a lot of muck-ups, a lot of backtracking and bits and bobs like that. Um, it's just this was a journey for myself, so th there's plenty of things I was learning as I was going on with this. So here are all the parts that you can see here. I've undercoated them all black. Um, I'm going to skip a few steps uh, in regards to like priming. Um, there are plenty of videos out there on YouTube which will show you how to prime models and so forth, but basically I've just primed them all black, ready to go, um, and then I'll run you through the steps. Uh, if there are any questions or if there are any bits you think I might have missed, just drop them in the comments below and I'll try and answer any questions you have. So what we're going to do is start off by base coating the entire model with Vallejo Premium Dark Blue. I particularly like this one because it, if you're putting dark blue on top of a black, you get this kind of rich purplish color. It's not intentionally to be purple, but it's just the result you get. Um, once you highlight with the next color, you do get this very nice dark blue effect. So I particularly like it as well. Plus the pots come in 60 mil pots, so you get a lot more of it for your base coating needs. Now what you'll see throughout this video is um, I may work on a certain part of the model um, and I'll just say also do it with the rest of the parts of the model like you can see here doing the arms and the shoulder pads. Um, you may well see I'll just do the uh, body itself and then I'll say okay move on to the arms and do the same thing. The same techniques apply. Okay so now we've done the base coat and we're now going to highlight up with uh, Vallejo Premium Cobalt Blue which is a nice sort of rich, uh, um, I'm not going to say sea blue, but a, uh, a step below ultramarines, but a lot more richer than ultramarine blue. So, and this one, you're just dusting it on. Um, you don't want to heavily lay it down, uh, otherwise it's just going to obscure the dark blue and the black. Um, and we kind of want that because of the night horn there. Now, this is a different color texture to the way Forgeworld have done it, so this isn't the way Forgeworld do it, this is just the way I do it. So, um, if you don't want to do it this way, you don't have to, you can do it any way you see fit, but this is just the way I did it. Okay, now after I did the cobalt blue on, um, there's certain sort of areas on the model, like little ridges in the armor, which I wanted to pick out a little bit more. So I'm just doing a little bit of dry brushing, I mean, I'm talking very, very thin dry brushing, pretty much no paint on it, um, just to highlight up with those ridges. Uh, and again, that's using cobalt blue, um, just to try and get a little bit more of a edge highlighting, but using dry brushing, which is kind of contradiction, but hey. And again, you can see here, we're doing it with the rest of the models as well, so. What you may find with this model is a lot of things take a lot of time, so just be patient with it. It seems very daunting at first, but trust me, as soon as you get stuck into it, you'll be rolling. Uh, this took me approximately three days to paint. Um, but that's whilst filming, so that takes a lot longer, so I'd probably say you could squeeze it into about a day, if you had a good run at it. Okay, so what we're going to do now is move on to the lightning. Now, I've done lightning tutorials before, but basically I'll show you it again, just in case you haven't seen it. What you do is you start off by putting down a, um, a base sort of line. Um, and I do this just using um, ultramarine blue, basically. So, you don't have to be that neat at this point. Um, the colors will blend later so you just kind of want to give a sort of approximate line uh one thing to always stress with lightning less is more but don't do so little that it doesn't make an impact Now 
And what you can see is I'm also doing here is I'm trying to highlight up those ridges just a little bit more. Um, again, using the ultramarine blue just to highlight up some of the ones on the arms because I thought they weren't really standing out enough. Okay, the next step is being a little bit more refined using ice blue. Um, I believe it's called Hoeth blue these days. Uh, but basically, you just want to follow the same line you did before. Try and keep within the ultramarine blue and try and make it a little bit thinner, a little bit more refined. It's really not the end of the world if you go outside the lines. You could even add in more extra forks and bits and bobs. But you don't have to, it's not an exact science to it. Okay, the next step is the tricky one. So this is using white. Now, I would strongly suggest thinning down your white quite a lot here. Uh, what you want to do is go very, very precisely in the lines. You want to just do small, tiny little strokes, um, staying within the ultramarine and the ice blue. Um, what you want to aim for is, I, I tend to do it this way, is basically put white inside all of it in a very thin coat. Then when the forks join is put some more layers of white in there. So the joins, because that's where the most energy builds up, um, i.e. where it splits. So what you want to do is try to focus more light into that area. Um, again, a lot of the times you may find when you look at this closer, it doesn't look that nice, but this step after this will fix that and it will blend it all together. So you can see this is what it looks like once it's done. Okay, so the next bit is the, where the magic happens. Basically, what you've got to do is get an airbrush, and you want to use about 10 parts thinner to one part paint, and you want to use white. Uh, basically, mix it up, set your compressor down to a low PSI, 
um, and then what you want to do is very lightly dust on the paint. And what you can see there is you get this kind of glow effect. What it also does is merges the colours together, so um, if your lightnings are looking a little bit um, not so refined, uh, this will merge them and it will blend all the colours together and give you a really nice effect. So um, apparently it's called juicing in the industry, I've been told, but hey, it's, it's just something I sort of figured out one day. Um, but yeah, it could be used for glow effects as well, so keep it in mind, it's quite a handy little technique. And also, again, remember to do the other parts of the body, i.e. the arms, short pants, etc, etc. Okay, so this is probably one of the most grueling bits that about this model, basically. It's doing the metallics on it, the gold especially, because the base coat in the gold takes absolutely ages. There's so much little detail and filigree and stuff on this model. Um, it will take you a fair while. I mean, this is sped up about four times normal speed, um, and you can see it takes forever in a day, basically. So this bit, you're really going to want to stick some music on um, and just get to it, okay, because it's going to be one of the more tedious parts of the model. And again, I thought the edges weren't raised up enough, so I'm going back at it again with the dry brush to see if we can just pick out a few more of those ridges. Um, just see if we can get them to stand out just a little bit more, because I think they're going to be quite a good focal point. Um, well, maybe not focal point. Focal point's the wrong word. But, you know, they look cool. So, um, and again, back to the base coating of the gold. Still base coating. Still doing gold. Still doing even more gold. And this bit was a little bit fun because you get to do a bit more detail, so this is like the skull on the wings on the chest plate. Um, but again, still doing gold. And also as well, the gold colour I'm using is Necro Gold from Scale 75. So um, this is a really nice dark rich um, gold to get started with as a base coat. So uh, if you haven't checked out the Scale 75 Metallics range, I strongly suggest you do. They have some amazing colours. Also have a very good shop where you can get them from. I'll paste a link below if you want to check them out. And again, more gold but on other parts of the model so once you've done this bit you might want to take a break and have a cup of tea or some lunch or something like that because it is incredibly tedious it gets easier after this bit though so this is the one sort of evil you have to suffer through so after this bit um basically applying a wash of agrax earth shade to it um i've watered it down slightly because I didn't want it overly thick, but yeah, be a little bit careful when you're applying this wash as well. You don't want it over all the rest of the blue, especially you don't want it on the lightning side of things, so just be a little bit careful when applying this.
And again, more washing on the rest of the other parts of the model. The reason why I've done them all separately is easier to paint and control when all the parts are separate, um, putting them together later. Uh, it just makes life easier. Trying to paint them when it's all assembled becomes rather tricky. Okay, so what I'm doing at this point is um, I'm quite happy with the base coat layers, the gold and the lightning, so I'm just applying a varnish over it to try and lock it all in. Um, so I've kind of got a restore point I can go back to. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next bit. Now what I'm doing here is highlighting up with uh, elven gold. So it's a, it's a lighter gold on top of it. You're not doing full... Uh, base coating gold, you're just sort of highlighting up a bit. Um, you can be quite liberal with it though, but you don't want to completely obscure what's already there. So this is just to enhance the original base coat colour. Okay, and again, the rest of the model as well. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm actually applying some tourmaline alchemy, again from scale 75, into the sort of membrane parts of the wings on the chest plate. Um, I wanted to kind of give it a more... This has kind of got a red tint to it. Um, so it's kind of like a red metallic, because um, I just wanted to enhance the uh, Night Lord sort of variation of it. So, um, and again, I've applied a little bit more gold on top of that. This was just to try and get a kind of red gold effect. I don't really know if it works and I believe I'll change it later, so... Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm now applying a citrine alchemy on top of this. And this is again a highlight. Um, this is basically a pearlescent colour with a orangey, lemony sort of tinge to it. Um, again, from scale 75, a very, very, very nice colour. Um, quite hard to get just by mixing paints, so well worth checking out. Again, this is just a highlight, so even less um, applying it on top of what you've already done on the gold. But again, this isn't the final one, there's one more after this. What you kind of need to be conscious of at this point is where light is hitting. Um, where there's more light, there's going to be more highlighting, basically. So this is a point when you start to think about where light's coming from and what's going to be highlighted from it.
Well, it's worthwhile mentioning as well is make sure your paints are always thin down. Um, as many people say, many thin layers are better than one thick layer, so uh, what you may find is a lot of this doesn't look like it's actually applying a layer of paint, but it is actually. Um, and it allows the blend between the next colours to happen a lot easier, basically. Now the reason why I'm showing you everything um, as much as I can without it being a stupidly long video um, is I always find when I'm watching a tutorial there's parts have been missed out um, really interesting key points which I wouldn't usually get so uh, I'm trying to show as much as I can without it being extravagantly long so um, people can kind of pick up on bits and bobs and stuff like that. Okay, so now the last point um, is a really nice colour I like called White Alchemy from Scale 75. Um, this is basically a pearlescent colour um, and it's just highlighted on top. Uh, that we go into the very sort of highest points here. So you don't want to put much of this stuff down at all, just at the very points, um, the raised edges. Um, that's kind of it basically. Okay, and what you saw just there was actually me mucking up. Now, with this point, in regards to mucking up, if you haven't got the steadiest hand, I don't by any means. Um, if you do go over onto some detail, you've got to act fast, but you can solve it and you can fix it. Uh, basically, as long as your paint's wet, um, as soon as it goes down, wash off your brush, get some water on it, and just brush over the area where the paint's gone, okay? Uh, the water will break the paint back down again so it won't dry and then you basically dry off your brush and apply it to the wet area and it should soak up whatever's been sort of watered down. So if you do get stuck with that, literally wash your brush as quickly as you can, then wash the part, the sort of area of the model where you believe you've gone wrong. Um, dry off your brush and then soak up all the excess. Basically that's how to fix stuff. So. Yeah, everyone makes mistakes, so uh, I got taught that by the guys at Forge World, so it's quite a handy little trick to know. As you can see, this final sort of colour is um, its a lot more rapid, so you can get stuff done a lot quicker. Um, it's not as gruelling as the base coat. Okay, so it's worthwhile mentioning at this point as well. If you want a colder effect, add more silver to the mix, basically. Um, the more gold and the more sort of orangey gold you add into it, the warmer sort of feel you get. Now, I find with the Night Haunter himself, it shouldn't really be warm, it should be kind of cold. So, adding in like silvers and whites and stuff like that will make it a lot more sort of sharp and cold metal effect to it. So, bear that in mind if you're doing it a slightly different way, those are some of the effects you can get. And so that kind of wraps up part one. Um, part two will be on its way shortly. So uh, if you haven't already, click the subscribe button and you should be updated when part two is out. Uh, thanks for all for watching. Uh, if you want to check out more updates are on Facebook. Um, and hopefully I'll catch you all soon. Have fun painting and catch you in a bit. Bye bye.